handmade this beat. All right, welcome IE Preps fans. I am here with the one and only Kendall Mango, uh, pitcher at Chino Hills, uh, fr freshman, ma match prep freshman of the year, accolades go on and on and on. Um, and so we're so off, so glad to have her here today. How are you doing? I'm good, how are you? Doing great, doing great. Well, we're having a, um, a special series of interviews. Um, we wanna kinda just, get the spirits going and hopefully put some smiles on people's faces in the Inland Empire, particularly those, those in the softball community, in your case, who, uh, who follow you and just a fan of what you do. So if you can remember, when did you, do you first remember playing softball? How old were you? Um, I started softball when I was four years old in T-ball, which would be like 2007. I'm wow. Pretty sure. And, and you, you, and, and so at four years old, that's the first time you remember playing organized softball? Yes. Um, when I got into travel ball, it was around when I was nine years old. Um, okay. Okay. But that's the earliest I started travel ball. Now, something I was really, really impressed with you on is uh, when you said that you actually left the San Diego area, if I'm not mistaken, to, to start high school in Chino Hills. And I was like, wow. Yeah. You know, people only think about the sports part of it, but I'm sure you maybe had to get new friends. And it's, it's kind of hard when you're in, in that age to start over. Yeah. Um, was it always kind of like a, a – did you plan on leaving San Diego after eighth grade or it was just an opportunity? Um, it was kind of in between. We didn't know where we were going, but um, we knew at some point that my dad's job was going to take us away from San Diego but he wanted to do it at a time where my sister was graduating high school and I was promoting eighth grade. So it was kind of like a good time to move if there is a good time. Um, but we looked at a lot of places, but we ended up in Chino House. That's awesome. Now for students that are getting ready to go into high school next year, we have a lot of eighth graders that I'm sure are gonna watch this video who love softball. Do you have any advice for them starting high school, not knowing anyone? Do you have advice, something that, that kind of stuck with you that you think would be good advice for somebody who's going to start high school next year? Yeah. Um, in the softball terms, I would say just, like, keep going. Um, it gets hard um, with school and friends, and you get really, really busy, and your schedule just gets jam-packed jam -packed really quickly. And um, you just have to keep going. You can't quit because it'll all pay off in the end. Um, but like with the school standpoint, uh, I would say get out there. Um, something that's made an impact on me with high school is going to all the events, like football games and like the big events with school. Um, I've made a lot of friends and um, am in leadership now. Um, and it's just, one of the, like I'm having the best time of my life. That's awesome. I love hearing that. So you're involved with school leadership? Yeah, I'm in um like the student body. Uh this past year I was like I helped with um our Husky Pride and this next year I'll be involved in athletics. That's awesome. Okay, so um I'm curious because you are very, um, you take care of business in the classroom with your grades, but on the mound, um, you know, you're, you're no joke. Like you, you do not play around. How often do you train in the off season? In the off season, I probably train five to six days a week. Um, I try to um, pitch pretty much every day or do somewhat like something to help 
with my pitching, whether that be long toss or snaps, but I'm always doing something. Wow, I, I can tell we follow your social media and you were always getting it in with training. So that's pretty cool. Um, now, um, when I think about uh, you, you were like the, the freshman phenom, like everyone was talking about you as far as your talent, how young you were. And it's, 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 it's a big shift now. Now you're like a veteran. You know, you're a junior now. It's hard to, can't believe it, but you're a junior. Do you have any advice for parents that maybe they have a sixth grader, seventh grader um, that are aspiring to play, uh, to be a great softball player and one day want to play in college? Do you have any advice for them, anything that you could just think of that is, is something to keep, for them to keep in mind? Yeah. Um, I would say put, like, I know my parents put a lot of money, but put the time and money and support your kid as much as you can, because one day it will all pay off. And whether that's college softball or the Olympics, like I know my parents just want to see me on TV one day and they know that what they've done will eventually pay off. It will. It has already. Um, now, I want you to, I'm curious, I always wanted to ask you this. Where were you at and what were your thoughts when you were notified that, I'm assuming you were notified you were a finalist for freshman of the year for Max Preps two years ago, or was it just all of a sudden, boom, you're freshman of the year? How did that work? I actually didn't know at all. I can't remember where I was, um, but when I found out, like, I was extremely happy, um, but also humbled because I knew that I needed, like, to keep working. It, like, fired me up to keep working and keep putting in the work because um, I needed to get better. There's always room for improvement. Wow, that's a great attitude to have, and I can, I can vouch that you definitely, uh, you keep your, your, you know, you keep a level head, um, but I know that if I would've got Max Prep Freshman of the Year, you know, I been like, hey, check me out. But I mean, I just always wanted to know, like, what your how you felt and the emotions. So it's amazing that you didn't even kind of know it was happening. Now, as far as softball is concerned, um, whatever field we're in, if you want to be a teacher, if you want to be a dentist, we all have someone that we either just kind of like their game, not necessarily we want to be like them, but just like their game. Is there anyone, whether they're famous or not even famous? that you model your, your game after in any way? Um, well, someone that I look up to would probably be Rachel Garcia. Um, she, I'm a Corona Angel right now for um, Travel Ball, and um, she was also a Corona Angel. And that's just someone that I always look at and like look at her work ethic, her dedication to her team. She's never taking a break. She's always going and going. And um, I would love, I want to be just like that and at Nebraska. That's awesome. Angel Garcia is at Nebraska. She a, what year is she in right now? Uh, Rachel Garcia. Yeah, I'm sorry, Rachel. Um, she made the Olympic team, but she was going to be a red shirt senior, but I didn't think, I don't think she was going to finish her senior year because she made the Olympics. Gotcha. Well, that's an awesome person that to aspire to be uh uh to to aspire to be like now um your 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 team and it, it's so weird in just one year so last year I looked at you as like the young gun you know coming in here you know I, I met you I think as a sophomore and but I still kind of looked at you as like one of the younger players even though you really were considered the star player of the team now. Class-wise, you're a junior, and so whatever leadership that were you, you had before, now I assume it's almost expected more. So are you, are you expected um, on club or even at your high school, on your high school team, to be more vocal, or are you more reserved by nature? How does leadership play in as you get older? Um, well, um, with high school this year, um, we obviously got cut short of our season, but um, this year um, I got addressed to be a captain, um, but I've always been pretty vocal on the mound. I feel like the pitcher um, 
decides how the team attitude is um, because it like the pitcher has the ball every single pitch in every single inning and um you can't really show emotion on the mound you're you you should be able to look at the pitcher and not be able to tell if they're losing by 20 or winning by 20 um that's why I always try to stay vocal and because I know that someone could need a pick me up um uh, maybe they're not having a good game and like maybe maybe sometimes I need to pick me up um but uh, leadership is dev. I've had to be even more vocal this year, um, as I've gotten older, but that's really it. And, and as far as your team, um, I couldn't really tell. I, did you have a lot of seniors on the team last year? Like, is this year's team a mixture? Is it a young team or are you guys still a senior late in Um, last year we only had three seniors. Um, and this year we don't have a lot of seniors. We definitely have the most juniors out of everyone. So my class is more dominant. Um, I don't know how many seniors we have this year. Maybe like five or six. Oh, wow. So literally the, the year for your team is this year, but it, it, it could be even more so for next year with all of you guys being seniors. Yeah. All right, cool. And then um, final question is, we're really working hard to make sure that we put the same energy, um, as the kids say, keep that same energy. We're trying to keep the same energy for our awesome uh, student athletes who are female as, as for our male. So do you have any um, advice for media outlets like IU Preps or, or beyond of what you as a, a great student athlete uh, would like to see as far as promotion and exposure moving forward? Um, well, I, you guys have done a great job and, um, personally what I've experienced, um, with you guys, I did a photo shoot with Brooke Johnson and I thought that was a really cool experience, um, after my freshman year. So, um, definitely stuff like that, but I would love to see uh, more games like broadcasted. Uh, no matter how good the teams are. Like, it could be the um, CIF championship, but it could also be, like, just someone's league game that could be important because um, I love to watch softball, and um, that's about it. And that's a great suggestion. I, I um, you know, a lot of times people – don't get a chance to kind of see what they their view is. And, and as you're talking, I'm like, hey, I don't see a lot of high school softball games on TV. And I do see other sports quite a bit on, on TV. So that's something that, that I just kind of want to always keep on the forefront of, for our viewers and the conversation. So listen, um, I know this is a crazy time. Um, you've been in high school and being a, a student athlete and everything else. But I just, on behalf of everyone in IE Press Magazine, and the community, we want to tell you to continue the great job you're doing. We're extremely proud of you. Um, you. And I think there was one question that I missed, and I know what it was. It's probably the toughest, <laughs> toughest question that I had today. Is you were offered what you were offered like maybe what eighth grade for what co your college ninth grade? Um, like eighth grade, ninth grade, summer. Okay, so. I'm curious because this is a it's a blessing it's a great thing but I was always curious when you commit early is it just like hey I'm done that's it I'm going to that college don't ask me anything or when you commit are you like hey I'm going to this college but do do people who commit early also kind of go like mm, that's a nice college you know what I mean like I don't know if you can even say that but is it are is it um can it be a challenge? Um, I know it's a blessing to get an offer, period. But can it be a challenge, um, or is it you just don't think about it? Um, well, not for me personally, but um, since the rules changed with, like, talking to coaches, um, not till junior year and you can't commit till your junior year, um, I committed before that happened, but um, I also, like, recommitted after the rule. Um, but I know some other pe like teams or people that once they uh, commit, it's just like ride or die. 
um, just staying on that school. But before the rule changed, a lot of colleges um, didn't go after people that were already committed. Um, but that also changed with the rules. Now, um, some colleges are looking at other people that are already committed, but I didn't, that's really it. Well, that's a, that's a, that's a great answer. I was always just curious. And for those who don't know, you've already committed to what university? University of Nebraska. Cornhuskers. I'm a fan. Yeah. So, uh, great job with that. So, Thank Kendall, you. make sure you tell your family we said hello, continue your studies and your hard work and continue to stay optimistic. And we'll be praying that we get through this time and get back to what we know is normal and uh, just enjoy your time that you can and just know IE Preps is with you. Same to you guys. Thank you. Stay healthy. All right. Take care. Bye-bye. Bye-bye.